Hello guys, welcome back. I'm Julian. I'm here to do my reaction video for Season 7, Episode 11 of One Tree Hill. This time the title of the episode is You Know I Love You, Don't You? And I am excited to watch another episode of One Tree Hill to continue enjoying Season uh, 7. Uh, so far, the season has been really, really good. Uh, you know, the whole thing with Brooke and with Millie and all of it. It's just heartbreaking. So we'll, we're will we going to see what's going to happen in this episode. And yeah, let's, let's see if it's less heartbreaking. Probably won't be, you know, because Millie is in a lot of problems right now. And I am afraid for her. I feel that I am losing my Maleficent and I... <laughs> It really worries me, it really does. So let's see what this episode has in store for us. Hopefully it's a good episode. Well, every episode of Winter Hill is a good episode. So yes, I am excited to watch it. I'm excited to continue enjoying it. I hope you guys are excited to continue enjoying season um, seven with me. Yes, I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are excited as well. If you are, please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. You can go right now to Patreon and watch the full extended version for this reaction and so much more. So in case you guys want to do that, the link, like I said, will be in the description down below. And for now, that's about it. Without further ado, let's just begin with Season 7, Episode 11 of One Tree Hill. Here we go. <laughs> can do this. I'm so proud of you. You're so in love. It's been a week since we've been together. <laughs> I think it's a lot. Love my girl. Me too! I love her! So much! You guys are gonna be great parents. One way or another. I don't need kids to make me happy. <clears throat> what did I do to deserve you? Honey! What did he do to deserve you? Let's be honest. Because you're amazing. No. Ah! Victoria, what are you doing here? She got right you now, up? Having second thoughts. <laughs> so I'm just protecting our investment. Zero may not be a size, but it's clearly your IQ. <laughs> now get yourself home, clean yourself up, and whatever you do, don't show your face at Close Over Bros until you're ready to act like a professional. Thank you. He's a of reality check. She needed that, the tough love. Go, go, Millie. You know you did wrong. I love that mouth is gonna just come in. It's like, where's my Maleficent? Who? Because <laughs> she already so bailed her you have out. To Barcelona does both those things. But he wants Bar to play in the NBA. And he will. Nate, you got to trust us on this. Take the family to Spain, work on your game, and next year, we'll have you back in the NBA. Is that true? I don't know. I know nothing about any of this, so I don't know how to do it. Oh, hello! Hello, hello, hello to Miranda. It's been years since your last album, Haley, and you have momentum again. We have to capitalize on that. Nathan got a job offer in Spain. Honey, Good. you... Then you can send him a copy of the album when we finish. <laughs> I'm serious, Miranda. He's worked really hard for this. It's his dream. And, and what about your yours. dream? It's not yeah. Come Maybe on, you. Can... I think that you are in a very much a stable relationship where you could go a year. I don't know. I mean, I don't want this, but like her giving up everything just to go to with Nathan is... Like, you guys have survived a lot. So I think that this... This will be okay. Wait a little longer. You ship out next week. Not to do so would be a violation of your contract. Well, I'm not sure I can do this, Miranda. Oh, honey, well, Haley, give me the survival of the disabled second. depends on it. So you better get sure. Haley, come on. When you lie. I still love you, Melissa. Yeah. Okay, thank you. When you lie. But the thing is that when you lie. I do miss I do miss the old Millie in the sense of like her not getting high, but if like she wants to achieve this type of dream, I would love for her to follow that through without getting into drugs and alcohol. I mean, partying one night it's not there's nothing bad about that. She's young, why not? Um, but the thing is that 
the drop thing, that is a problem for me. I want to hug for my queen, my baby, my child of my life right there, Millicent. So you didn't want anything better happening to you. Is everything okay? It will be eventually. It's just... Just what? Please don't tell me it's because of me. No, no, no. it's nothing like that. It is. You're mad at me. I can tell. No, Alex, it's just... Just forget it. Fine. It's obviously about me, because if it wasn't, you tell me. We found out Brooke can't get pregnant. She can't have kids. You said oh my you God. told her? You must... I shouldn't even have told you. Yeah, you, you maybe so you So please, shouldn't. let's just keep it between us, okay? Oh, God. Sure. You know, to be honest, I didn't even know I wanted to have kids until the moment I found out I might not be able to. So sad. You would have been such a great dad. He, he can still be a good dad. You guys could be good friends, but I'm pretty sure we're not gonna like this. Oh, have you seen my sevens? No. Jeez. Oh, Millie, Millie. Are these what you're looking for? Yes. Can I have my jeans, please? She or is this she... what you're after? Yes. Alex, that's mine. Alex, yes, don't! throw it out! Don't! Millie, no! No! Oh my god. Millie! <laughs> you did Stop not just it. do it. I thought you were my friend. I am. Millie, you can't see it now, Millie. but I know what I'm doing. Saving her girlfriend. That's what she's doing. You don't. You're just some washed up actress that's too dumb to realize she's chasing after a boy that has no interest in her. And if you had half Millie. a brain, you'd understand that. Millie. Julian doesn't want you in his life. And neither do I. No! Alex was doing the right thing. It's just Millie's just too caught up in this. How am I, how is it that my girl has changed so much? I hate this. But how much longer do you think my dad can really work this place? There's a lot riding on me right now. Hell, I stand to make more money in the next year than my dad made in his whole life. Okay. But I have okay. one shot at this. My family has one shot at this. It's everything. Oh, he's not sure if he wants to I like you, with Clay. You. Who did Ken Arthur tell you he was going to pair you up with? Mark Wetton. Oh. I go with Jim Mitchell. I like a better fit. And, uh, good luck with everything. I'll be seeing you around. But I mean, it's, it's understandable. Clay understands where this kid is coming from, you know? I know what you're going through. My sister went through it too. Of course, she was a lot older than you. Julian told you? I can't believe I knew that I knew that, that she was gonna do something like that. I'm not saying that she might not mean well, but you're the last person Brooke wants to have this conversation with. Alex, oh, my child. His dad said that it was unmakeable with you attached. You are the reason the project is dead. <laughs> are no. you kidding me? No, that's not true. It is true. Maybe you should ask Julian about that next time you talk about everything. Oh, God. Get out of my store. Oh, God. Alex, you should have done that. See, you know, I... Uh, like, let's see what I told you when I said that she's her worst enemy. This is exactly what I meant. Because Julian told you this, in, like, in... I guess in some type, like some form, to be like a, a friend, and you go and do this, honey. You know that red dress that I was supposed to wear at the closeover bro show. You get me that dress, we'll be square. But that's an unreleased original from Brooke's new line. She'd freak if that got out. I can't give you that. Yeah. And I think the weather report from Milliville is going to be mostly cloudy, a very little chance of snow. Oh, my God. This is awful, sweetie. So am I selfish oh if I want to go on tour? God, Millie. No. Hey, I'm sorry if I've been tough on you lately. 
toughen a little bit. I guess there's a part of me that just wants to try and fix everything. Forgive me. I don't know. Brooke, what's wrong? Oh, you what's told wrong? Alex that I can't have children. Hey, that was personal. Yeah, it was not. That yours. was between me and you, and you told her. Sorry, please forgive me. No, what's even worse than you telling her is that you told her you want kids. You told her the truth, and you lied to me. Oh, Jesus. Brooke. You were wrong, Julian. And Alex out of all people, come on. I'm not going on tour. I want you to have your dream. What? I want to show you something. This is a map of your tour, but more than that, this is the adventure that you and Jamie are going to have while I'm in Spain. So you got Disneyland in LA, Grand Canyon outside of Phoenix, and then when you get to Chicago, there's this really great rib joint I know Jamie's going to love. <laughs> we got it all figured out. Every stop in every city. Nathan. And when you guys are down on the tour, you and Jamie can come to Spain to see me. It's see? a logical thing now to do. you can do. have your dream too. Yeah. You told me then that you wish you could go on tour again. And I want you to have that wish. It should just be us, Hales. If we do that, then I think everything's going to turn out fine. Yeah, I think that too. I think I you guys are strong Scott. enough. <laughs> and I love our little family. I love you too. Mm. This is the right thing to do. I knew Nathan will have will have done this. Sweetie, sweetie. Oh, oh my kid, I'm kids. Oh, sweetie. I'm so glad that you're being such a better. Well, I don't Delicious. accept it. I just doesn't mean you can't have a family. Exactly. We'll adopt. And it's not the same. No, it will be the same. <gasps> yes, it is. Yes. I just wanted it so bad. Sweetie. How did Julian take the news? He told Alex he wants kids. Yeah. Well, maybe he's not the one for you. But what if I'm the one for him? Oh, God, bro. Oh, God. I understand sorry, that, I made... you know, I understand, of course, there, eventually, I, I guess, uh, she will, you know, you know, pick another option, adopt, or any other option that could be out there, you know? But right now, everything hurts for Brooke, and I hate this, I hate this. Sad, man. Do you think Sarah would let you quit? Ooh. What do you think she'd say? Nothing. Sarah's dead. I was never his, and he was never mine. Yeah, let's try not to like put on a on it on the ghost. You know, when I said I was staying, I'm staying. This Clay. He's right here. Yes, I'll see you. Oh. Everybody's being so dramatic. It's a dream. Clay, can you stop with this? Dan Scott, Rachel Scott, Lucas Scott, Peyton Scott, Mr. James Scott. Scott, Nathan Scott, Haley Could James I Scott. Please trouble you. For an autograph, sure, no problem. Isn't that Jimmy's something mom? special you wanted me to say? You don't know who I am, do you? I'm sorry, I meet a lot of How dare you profit from the death of my Jimmy? Well, I just came here today to tell you that you will never find forgiveness with me. Never. He deserves that and so much more. Where's the camera crew when you really need one? Oh, Rachel, please. I, I, I just, like, 
he changed his life. It's just an act. What he's doing is just an act because he he's like, oh, I can reach people. No, you're profiting f from it. Wasn't he already rich? What the hell was that? I asked you not to say anything and you marched right over there the first chance you got. Because of you right now, Brooke and I aren't even talking. Maybe that's not such a bad thing. Oh, uh, stop, What's that Alex. To mean? It means I can give you everything you want and Brooke can't. No, you're I not. We covered Brooke. this ground after. Maybe I lied. Because I love you. Alex. And deep down inside, I know you love me too. No! Alex, he doesn't. Let me be perfectly clear. I do not love you. But you like me. You said I was talented. Well, maybe I lied. No, one thing has nothing to do with the other. The fact that he thinks you're talented. And he might have liked you as a friend has nothing to do with him liking you or something else. He has Brooke Davis. Brooke Davis by his side. Do you think he has eyes? Do you think he has eyes for anyone else as pretty as you are, Alex? But like, no. No. No one can compete with Brooke Davis. Unless you're... Peyton Lucas. That's an exception to the rule. Brooke told me about the movie. Prove my point. <laughs> so it's true that... That nobody wants me. Yes. No! Oh, Dio mio! Well, he's hurt now! Oh, you know who she should go with? Maleficent. Oh, God, it will be perfect. You can't go. I wasn't asking you, Marvin. I was telling you. Hey. Stop! You need help. Okay, you have a problem, and you need real help. Yeah? My only problem is you. Ooh. Millicent, if you walk out that door, don't bother coming back. Do you understand me? That, yeah, that is exactly what she needs. Thank you, Miles. She's like, boy, bye. Honestly, Miles, it's... Like, up until the point he was like, you need real help. I'm about to get you real help. You know? That was that. That was good. Then he, if you walk away from me, then never come back. Are you serious right now? You should have never stayed here. Being here means you have to give things up, and I am tired of making you give things up. L.A. Oh, Jesus work, Christ. Alex, and now. Brooke, I don't care oh. about having kids. That's not true, and you know it. You, you don't want need to all lie. That. You don't need to lie. Then you should have it. He still can't have it with you. I don't you? want to be the girl that keeps denying it from you. Oh God, Brooke. I think you should take another movie. And what about us? What are you really saying? I'm saying I need some time. Oh no. Apart. Oh no. Yeah. Oh God. It's gonna be all right leaving Tree Hill, right? Tell me it's okay. It's gonna be okay, I promise. And you think Jamie will understand? I'll be fine. All right. Jamie will be fine. I don't want to do the show. I'm done. You're funny. <laughs> this is your end. It's enough for you to start over. You have a whole life ahead of you. Are you trying to get rid of me, Dan? No, of course not. I just want to stop. We can run away and just live our lives. We can go old together. Really? You're already old. Yeah, <laughs> you're just going to say that. And what we have is enough. When that clock stops running, I'm entitled to all of it. So she's not leaving. It's gonna be a great show, honey. We always give them a great show. Really bad, actually. Can you fix it? I don't think so. I don't think it's. I'm sorry, bro. Millie, you know? So promise me right now that if I get this job in LA, you'll go with me. Oh, yes, bless. I mean, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna be skilled. Don't leave me hanging, dog. Okay. Deal. My man. She stole me.
the dark I'm going to Hey, this is Julian. Here comes the... I'm just calling to tell you how sorry I am for all the trouble that I've caused you. Wait, what are you but doing? But you don't have to worry, because from now on I won't be around to cause you any pain. Stop! Stop! Oh, and in God. spite of everything that you said to me, I will always love you. Stop, sweetie! Goodbye. No! 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 Please, no! No, no, no! 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 Oh my god! Oh my god! No! For the love of all gods! No! Okay guys, so that was the end of season 7, episode 11 of One Tree Hill. Oh my Jesus. Okay. Was Julian wrong in telling Alex about what is currently happening with with Brooke? Yes. He was absolutely wrong because as much as he is part of this relationship and, you know, this affects him as well because of, you know, how they're going to be able to have children and all of that. It wasn't his secret and his news to tell anyone especially not Alex I understand that he's going through a lot but is if, if he's going through a lot imagine how how much and how difficult this is for Brooke Brooke already hates Alex she doesn't want to work with her she feels this uh, um, she feels threatened by her and he goes and tells her something so private about Brooke knowing that Alex is very much of you know crazy and free spirit whatever you want to say about her she is and you never you can never control her I don't know if he wants a friend I, I honestly don't understand why he told her but he did, and then he goes and, yes, tells... I don't think he lied necessarily to Brooke in saying that he wants her. But I think he didn't tell her the entire truth, which was that my, while he still wants her, he still feels that he wanted to be a dad, which is a totally understandable, you know, uh, feeling that he should have had a talk with Brooke, not with Alex. So, in the past, I've been saying that, you know, Brooke is exaggerating. I didn't say actually that, but like, you know, I could see where Julian was coming from in the sense like he was just working, he was focusing on his work, and. But now I do like truly, truly feel for Brooke even more because he is having a relationship with Brooke. He knows how much Brooke doesn't like this person. He stopped working with with Alex. He knows Alex has other intentions with him. Yet he continues to pursue this friendship and continues to even tell her such a deep, deep, personal, private thing about Brooke. So it is terrible. What he's doing is just... Like, it, it, it's, I, I feel like he's sabotaging his own uh, relationship with Brooke by doing this, by continuing with this. He has set up limits with Alex. Don't get me wrong. He has said, I don't love you. I don't, I don't, don't have those feelings. This is work. I care about Brooke. I care about Brooke. But at the same time, he, do, he says all these things, yet he continues to be there for Alex rather than for his girlfriend. Now, the day that a Alex was about to get high, fully understand that he went there. Okay? And that he was trying to help and all of that. Um, but the telling her that she has problems to conceive, it was something he didn't need to say, that he didn't need to um, 
share with her. It was just wrong. In every sense of the wrong, the war wrong, that was just wrong. Okay, and I hate that. Now, of course, there's options. There's adoption. There is, well, I'm going to guess that that's her only option at the moment. Adoption. I don't know. I mean, they, they just have told us she can't have kids. We don't know if they still can, like, maybe extract or heart. I don't know what it's called, you know, the, the eggs so they can retrieve them and have a pregnancy, you know, a surrogate. And have the babies through someone else, you know. I, I don't know. They haven't specified which options she has available for her. I understand that this this moment right now is more so of mourning because she wanted this. She wanted the feeling of having a child, to have a baby, like her friends had, you know. So she wanted that for her, for herself. But... You know, and I feel that it's okay for her to have this moment to mourn that, to mourn the fact that she's not going to be able to give birth and, like, to have the baby, you know, inside of her and all of that. I understand that. And if she feels like she needs to mourn this, I think it's okay. But I also feel like eventually she's going to come out of it. She's going to realize that she just has too much love to give. And that any child in the world will be happy and proud to call her their mother. And that she will be able to have a family through adoption or any other ways. So I don't think this is the end by any way. I don't think it's the end. I don't think that's it. Brooke is never going to have children. She will have children. One way or the other, she will become a mother. And... It might not be the same experience as what Haley and Peyton had, you know, but it is it will still be hers and she will be like she was a mother to Sam. So for me it's like of course she's going to be a mom. There is no way for me to think that she will will not. I understand where she's coming from from the biological side of it. I get it. You know, but she, like I said, has so much love to give that she will be eventually uh, ready to, to seek other options. And I'm glad that she has enough of a good relationship with Victoria right now, where Victoria is there for her, and I'm glad. You know, Victoria, I feel also with the whole Julian thing, is more of, like, protective over Brooke in the sense of, like, Oh, you don't... Like, he doesn't deserve you. He's not the one for you. He's, like... You know? Because I feel like she... And because of her previous relationship, she wants to protect Brooke from the heartbreak. And what she's doing is just making this even worse in some aspects. Because she doesn't really know Julian. Or at least she doesn't want to really know that he loves her. But... What might have worked or not worked for Victoria is not the same thing that will work or not work for Brooke. So she needs to be aware of that, you know? Um, oh, God. Oh, God. But was this a terrible episode for 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 my Brooke? For my Brooke. It was terrible. Um, the one relationship I was not feeling in this episode was Clay and Quinn. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I don't know about... I don't know. <sighs> I like Clay. I understand Clay, and I understand him living and all of that. Because, you know, he came here for Nathan. Ooh, that's my chair. He came here for Nathan, you know. Um, I understand that. But he has a relationship with... with with Quinn, he's not even considering in the process of moving out and leaving Tree Hill. Um, and Quinn is so into him that she's like going to, I don't know. But I wasn't feeling their relationship on this episode. And I don't know, Quinn sometimes feels more on, of, of an accessory. I mean, she was there to fight uh, Nathan and, 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 and Haley about Clay 
and then she's gone, and then they are, they forgot about the, the fight, you know. But, I mean, sisters and siblings in general, you fight one day, the next day you're like, okay, stupid, let's continue talking, you know. I mean, at least I am like that. Um, um, but it was very much like that, but I don't know, I'm not, at least on this episode, it didn't felt too close with Clay and Quinn. They're cute, but, like, I need more. To really, like, love them. Like, I love... I mean, no one can top how much I love Nathan and Haley. You know, Naley. Or how much I love Brulian. Um, so, yeah. I need a lot more, I guess, from them. I don't even know the ship name for Cl Clay and Quinn. Quinn? <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyways. Then we have... Millicent. Maleficent. She is just going down, and like, I hate seeing that. Now, in general, I do like the fact that a show like this, that is aimed towards, I'm gonna guess, young adults now. I mean, it was more of a teen type of audience before, but they have grown up, so it's a lot more for young adults, I'm gonna guess. Um, but they are tackling, like, really, really heavy subjects with the drug addiction and now with also an attempt at suicide. Hopefully it's just an attempt because if she dies, I'm going to, like, oh my god, please don't, okay? I, I don't need to go through another, no, I don't need to cry, I don't, I don't need it, okay? So save it, she's gonna be okay. Please, I hope that she's okay. She didn't look okay, though. But, like, the fact that they went there, like, kudos to them for speaking up about this very heavy subjects. Um, of course, I'm not liking what is happening with Maleficent right now. Um, she is just spiraling out of control. Right now, drugs have taken over her. And, of course, her mood, her personality... All of this is changing because she's trying to fit in in a group that she shouldn't. And it's so realistic for someone like like Millicent that has such a like shy personality and has never truly believed that she could be a, like a supermodel and things like that. For her to be absorbed by this crazy world, you know, by the by modeling and all of that, because we know how much drugs you know running those type of 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 circles and like the pressure that she's on she's supposed to be the face she's to, supposed to be you know thin because i mean alex did call her you know a plus i model and things like that and back then it is considered oh my god you cannot be a plus i model even though that's the entire thing for the line you're like zero is not a, a size but she is getting caught up with all of this. And Brooke is going through her own things. I don't blame her for focusing on herself right now. <sighs> but then you have Mouth, who is supposed to be her boyfriend. The one who's supposed to care. Yes, he's been confronting her about the issues. But he's being more like, so you're doing this. This destroying our relationship. Which, at the moment, it's not like... Like, Millie can have a, a working, like, new, good, and healthy relationship because she's not healthy herself. She needs more than anything a partner, a friend. But Mouth is not that. And Mouth is ready to jump and go to California. Granted, Mouth, Mouth is not married to Millicent. Mouth is not Millicent's savior. He, like, no one should represent that for anyone else. But boy, does Millie need a friend. And if that friend is no other than your boyfriend, the one who you are supposed to be with, and, like, he's supposed... He just wanted a boring life. That he, that's what he wanted. Like, the first time it presents a challenge that it not only involves the relationship, the dynamic of the, the relationship completely changing, but also... The fact that your significant other is 
probably gonna OD or die or something terrible can happen to, to her. All you can do is like, you shouldn't do that. You need to get help. Yes, granted, she needs to get help on her own. But right now, having a support system helps. But he just doesn't want to do that. He feels that she's failing the relationship. That's it. That's how I feel. I don't know about you guys, but that's how I feel. That he feels that she's failing him. When in reality, she's failing herself in what she's doing right now with uh, the drugs and all of this. And she needs more than anything a friend that can get her out of here. That can get her the help that she needs. Not everyone can be strong enough to pull themselves from this hole and drag their ass to rehab to, you know, start working through some sort of process. Even so, after that, you still need a support system. But no, apparently no one wants to do that for for Millie. The only one who could do it, in my opinion, is Mouth. But Mouth is just like, oh yeah, I can't fix her. It's not your job to fix, fix her. I get it. But it is. it should be not your job, but at least if you care about her, if I care, if the person I care about was going through something like this, I will care about their well-being. And yes, calling and like letting, like trying to find out where she was and things like that, it is caring about her well-being. But after you find out that you, this person is doing drugs and, you know, living this other life, honey, I will like, I will say, you know what? You need to get help. This is not you. This is not right. You're going to destroy your entire life if you continue down this path. We're going to get you to rehab. Even like do an intervention or something like that. No one is thinking about doing that for Millie. Not even mouth. You know, so it's just terrible. And I'm not even saying like Alex because Alex is going through her own things. She hasn't gone through rehab. I mean, she's she's not doing drugs and she understands where where Millie's coming from, but Alex is in no place to try to save or help Millie. She did what she thought it was good, which was like throwing out the drugs and like that could so solve the problem for that precise moment, but nothing else. But yet, you know, she has, she can do it. Like look at where Alex is right now. How can Alex help Millie if Alex is going through something like this? She is like, this is the wrong, the bad thing about not going into rehab and not following the steps and not having really anyone who cares about you. Now, it is very wrong that she puts Julian in the position of like, if you don't come save me, then I'm going to die. It's very bad. I'm not saying Julian should, you know, always pick up the, the call and always be there to save her. It's not his job. I understand. Even as a friend or whatever. Um, but she does need help. Where is she going to get it? Where, where it seems like no one cares about her. So I understand where this is coming from for her. She feels completely alone. And right now, you know, she thinks that this is the best solution. And it's sad and it's heartbreaking to see such a young, beautiful girl, talented girl, not seeing a future not seeing anything else for herself that this is a choice that they want to make. It's just awful. It's just awful, you know? Um, and I feel sad that she doesn't have anyone to talk about this type of things. And that the one person that she could have is like she pushed him away because she was like, well, but you wouldn't, you were nice to me. But just imagine like no one else has been nice to her. So the first person that, she, that is nice to her, she immediately, you know, falls in love. And and because I don't really think she's in love with him. I just think that since he treats her right, she thinks that must be love. And yes, it must be like, it could be, it could have been a type of friendly type of love. But she doesn't understand that, you know, because she doesn't have any working relationships that could, you know, for her, it's always like, oh, if she, if someone wants, if I want to achieve something, I have to slip my way through. You know, that's what they want from me. This is what is expected of me. 
And right now, she's all alone and she is, you know, in such a dark place. I really hope nothing bad happens to her. I really do. Even though that last scene looked, oh my god. It looked too... Oh god, it was terrible. The other, like, oh my god moment, what was that slap that Jimmy's mom gave to Dan? Boy, did that... Did Dan deserve it. Because he thinks that the only thing he ruined was, you know, oh, he killed... Keith and now Nathan doesn't talk to him. He she he left a, a child without a father. Someone that we know will have been an amazing dad to what is her name? The child? Keith's child? What is her name? Ophelia. No, I don't know. I don't know the name of the kid. What was it? I don't know. But he left her without a father. She, he left Karen without a husband. Lucas without a father. Nathan without a, uh, like, uh, uh, um, an uncle. Jamie without an uncle. The, like, and even, you know, Jimmy. Because for a long time, everyone believed that Jimmy was the murderer. You know, the mom had to, um bury him alone she was alone because the entire town hated him for what he did to Keith Karen hated him everyone hated him and like I don't think Dan understands the extent of of what he did I still think he doesn't um, because he is you know he says oh I want to help people you're helping yourself feel better and collecting money from those who you know believe in the crap that he says good marketing i'm gonna give it a to to rachel maybe but he still keeps doing it he's actively doing this and when active like yeah passively as as well because he is like oh yeah no it's just that i really want to help people but you're still collecting the money yeah but i don't care about the money but people are collecting the money for it you are making a profit from it. And yeah, you might be helping one or two, three people, but like you're still pocketing all of that, going in limousines and profiting from the pain of a lot of people, continue to traumatizing a lot of people because now you have a show where you can like, you know, put it out loud how much you regret it, but not actually doing anything that shows that you regret it. So... This is still a long way for for Dan. Also, he traumatized Clay, Clay enough <laughs> that Clay's like, nope, I'm not wearing... I'm wearing a suit from now on. At least you, there's something good happened there, I guess. I don't know, but like he continues to do th shit that you are like, okay, yeah, he's still Dan Scott, you know? <laughs> and Rachel, you know, being Rachel because... It's never enough for her. She is still an addict, you know, and and she behaves like one. And she also, I feel like, doesn't even have love in her life. I don't think she loves Dan. I think she loves what he represents. I don't even think that uh, Dan loves Rachel. He's more like, I deserve someone like her to remind me that I am a terrible person. I think that it's more the dynamic between them rather than love or any similar to that. I don't think that they love each other. I don't. Um, yeah. Then you have Naley. For a minute, I was like, Haley, you stupid. Because I was like, if you, you're just going to go? Like, you're not 16. This is not nothing to do with you kissing Chris Keller. Those times are gone, sweetheart. And like... You guys, like, Naley have uh, such a strong relationship right now that I don't feel... I don't, I'm not worried that the love is going to fade away. That the love is not going to be there after a year. If anyone could pull something like this, it's Naley. So I'm not worried about that. I feel like it's okay for them, both of them, to chase their dreams. Not only for Nathan, which is like... 
I'm happy that Nathan can do that and that he's going to Spain. He's going to play there. He, does he speak Spanish? I'm going to guess he's going to have someone translating things for him, but it would be good if he learned some Spanish. Um, oh my, my God, imagine him speaking Spanish. I will die. Uh, but like, if anyone can pull this off, it's Nayli. That's all I'm saying. Nayli will be able to survive this. Because it's not, it's only just a year, so I think it, this is gonna be good. Okay, so I'm not afraid that something might happen. As long as Chris Keller is nowhere around. <laughs> I'm kidding, even if Chris Keller was there. Nothing bad would happen to Nayli. And I, I'm glad that they're going on tour, even though Jamie will be happy if, you know, they can inform him. What's happening? Because he felt a little bit left out, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that Nathan was like, no, you're living your dream as much as I live. I'm living mine. So no, we're not going to. Um, um, we're not going to just follow my dream. You know, we're gonna follow our dream. It's okay, and you're gonna do you yours, and I'm gonna follow mine. It's gonna be okay. Um, so yeah, this was a great episode. I'm probably forgetting to talk about something else. A clay, like the clay queen situation. I don't know what to talk about them because I'm not feeling them that much lately. So, well, lately, and by lately, I mean this episode, literally, just this episode. But it's okay. Uh, but I love it this episode, as I always love every single episode. I cannot wait to watch the next one because that ending. I want to die myself. Oh, God. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you guys like my reaction for it. We can continue the conversation in the comment section down below. Give it a lot of thumbs up. If you love One Tree Hill, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. And you can go to Patreon right now and watch the full extended version for this reaction and so much more. So in case you guys want to do that, the link, as always, will be in the description down below. And for now, that's about it. Thank you so much, guys, for watching and for all your support. I'll see you guys next time for more reaction videos for Wonder Hill. That's it. Mwah. Bye, guys.